I went to my local Indian dealer, which is Motorcycles of Dulles, out by the airport. It's a great dealership. They sell Indians and Triumphs and BMWs and Royal Enfelds and Zero Motorcycles. I know they sell a lot of used bikes too, so they sell pretty much everything under the sun. Uh, really patient, all the salespeople, the service people, the owners, patient, answer any question you got, humor you with a zillion questions, you name it. So I was up at MOD looking at the Indian Scout in person for the very first time and I loved it. It's beautiful. I sat on it and I could easily flat foot it. I think it's got a 25 inch seat height. I'm not a big guy. I'm 5'7". So the Scout was great. And I met a sales guy and, you know, talking all about the motorcycle, talking about the Scout 60 and gosh, which is the best one to get for a beginner or either of them appropriate for a beginner. And yeah, they thought they were absolutely appropriate if you're level-headed, patient, spend your time learning the motorcycle, you don't just try and get on the road, go crazy. And, you know, they didn't actually have a Scout 60 in stock, they had just sold their last one. And so we had a big discussion about the benefits of a Scout 60, which is less expensive versus a Scout. And honestly, while the Scout 60 does have a little less horsepower, could be a little safer for a rookie. I mean, the Scouts aren't that much more expensive. And if you buy a motorcycle and you love that bike and you want to ride it for years to come, that's the other way to look at it. You know, a, a regular Scout might be more powerful, but it's also going to be more satisfying for longer. But anyways, the sales guy told me, you know what, why don't you ride it? Let's see what you think. So he brought the bike. It was a, a candy apple red Scout with white stripes, chrome, absolutely beautiful. about 155 miles on it. I would say it was their demo bike, but at MOD they'll let you ride whichever bike's on the showroom. It doesn't have to be specifically for a demo. And uh, the sales guy brought the bike outside. I got on it, turned it on, it sounded great, felt good, and off I went. I let that clutch out, gave it a little bit of gas, I was underway. You know, I was worried the bike would flip out from under me as soon as I gave it any gas, but it was really forgiving, really gentle throttle. Again, common sense was the key. And so I did a little circuit, like right around the, where the dealership is, it's like an industrial park. I just rode kind of a, a big circle around. I don't think I went faster than 30, 35 in third gear. And that's that's faster than I ever went in the MSF course. I don't think I ever got out of second gear in the MSF course. So it was really cool. And it was exhilarating because I was doing it without anybody looking over my shoulder. And it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I, I, I already had a little window that said, okay, I'm really going to like riding. Outside of that kind of stifling classroom environment, it's going to be fun. So I got back to the dealership after like only five minutes, parked the bike. And the sales guy and I are continuing to talk. Again, Scout 60, Scout, is it either one too much motorcycle for a beginner? I don't want to kill myself, blah, blah, blah. And the sales guy's view was either one is totally acceptable for a beginner if you are level-headed, calm. Do the things that the MSF course teaches. Spend time in a parking lot just practicing, you know, your your friction zone, your braking, the basics, true basics, before you're ever out on the road riding. The only thing that gave him pause was that the Scout has forward controls in his view, I think he rode BMWs. Was that mid controls are probably better for learning than forward controls because as many people have explained in their various videos it, they think it gives you a little more control over the motorcycle and as I mentioned the two motorcycles that got my attention 
when I started this venture were the Scout, obviously, but also the Triumph Bonneville Bobber, which is just a beautiful bike. So pretty, classic looking, very well reviewed, everyone seems to love it, at least if they're not doing long touring rides. Sales guy actually mentioned the bobber as maybe something else I should consider because it has mid controls. Please don't give me a ticket, Mr. Police Officer. I didn't mean to be speeding. Really. Anyways, I'm actually on the 95 South Express Lane. It's a demand based pricing toll road, but it's free for motorcycles. Because we're so environmentally friendly, they want to encourage motorcycle riding. God bless the great state of Virginia. Anyways, the sales guy thought I should try the bobber because it's got mid controls. And having already been in love with that motorcycle, I was quick to agree. So he went and he pulled the Triumph bobber out, set it up for me. I got on the bike again, just like the Scout could easily flat foot it, felt very comfortable, so it was time to go. I let out that clutch slowly and got underway and immediately that bike was going 10 miles an hour right towards a curb. See the, the bobber was set up perpendicular to the exit and the exit was kind of up uh, a slight incline so I would have had to turn and go uphill but given a little bit of juice and my rookie self was not prepared for that at all it was way too much for me to get a motorcycle underway remember everything you have to do apply a little bit of back brake work the throttle a little bit turn the motorcycle turn your head and look where you're going and I freaked out I got nervous I just saw myself heading towards the curb I knew I was about to crash, so I grabbed a handful of front brake, and down I went. Ugh, it's terrible. Just terrible. I dropped this beautiful motorcycle and cost myself a thousand dollars. I put a scratch on the pipe, scratch on the mirror, throw in a little labor. That was the estimate to replace the, the components that I had damaged. Now that's dealership money. They were not replacing anything on that bike. They'll just sell it as is. You could barely see anything. But having signed the waiver, accepting full responsibility for my life and and the health of the motorcycle, I was out a thousand bucks. I was so upset. First, I was humiliated that I dropped a bike. I was angry that I dropped a bike because as soon as I did it, I knew exactly why. And it was just it was a dumb thing. But it was a rookie thing that happens. Any first time rider, you're gonna drop a bike sooner or later. Uh, it happens to experienced riders, you know? If you just get careless, don't pay attention, no problem. So anyways, that just made me want to ride it even more. And that's a good sign. <laughs> I wasn't terrified, I was angry. I dropped a motorcycle. I've now invested a thousand dollars into a motorcycle. I don't even know if I like riding. But it's already past my budget. If, if the Honda Rebel was what I had in mind for testing to see if I liked it, then the Bobber at like 13, 14 grand was pretty much twice as expensive. I was not thrilled. So I wanted to ride it again. And the sales guy, he, he agreed. Yeah, you got to do it again. That's how you learn. But before I could ride it again, I had to do a meeting with the owner of the dealership. The guy's name is John Tish. The nicest guy in the world. You know, he's a businessman. He's in the business of selling motorcycles. But I can tell you that I truly believe he actually cares about the people buying motorcycles from him. He cares about people buying motorcycles for a first time. And he wants them to be safe. To know what they're doing. 
because that's going to keep them coming back for more and getting their bikes served. It's all good for business. Safety first. Anyways, it turns out that before I had ridden the Scout, I was supposed to actually meet with John, go over the motorcycle, go over basic operating in the parking lot. This is what he does for new riders. Duck, walk the bike around just to feel it, see if I'm comfortable with it. And it's also his opportunity to assess the riders to see, am I comfortable with this person riding this motorcycle off the premises? And my sales guy and I kind of skipped that part. I guess he's kind of new. He's a great guy. I'm not going to mention his name. I just want him to sell a lot of motorcycles. And so he came back and he told me, well, you got to do all this stuff with John since you dropped the bike. And he's kind of tied up right now selling bikes. So I waited for a couple hours and he wasn't available. It just, no fault of his own, he's just doing a good job selling a lot of bikes. So I had to leave. So we made an appointment for me to come back in an hour, uh, in a week, and, and ride the bobber that next weekend. 